I think what's changing for digital agencies is that people now look to do projects that leave a legacy with their organisation, that move them forward as marketeers or, or technologists. And so I think as an agency, you have to be open to that and positive about that. I think as agencies, our job is to be the people that are perpetually learning and experimenting with technology. Hi, this is Eric Jones with Velocitize. I'm here with Jim Bose, who's the CEO and founder of Manifesto, it's true. Uh, one of the leading digital agencies uh, in London. Yeah. Um, welcome. It's good to have you here uh, in Austin. It's great to be here. I'm really excited to be back in Austin. It's five years since I was last in this building and I spent some time uh, with WP Engine five years ago. I think uh, around about then, Manifesto is six years old and we just hosted our own website on WP Engine. So that's how we first started working with WP Engine. Yeah, it's good. It, it does seem like the remit has, has shifted a bit for digital agencies. Uh, right where you know you were kind of boxed into an area, you know, improve our website, do X, Y, Z. Um, but now I think you know clients and businesses and brands are thinking a little bit more holistically about everything. It's not just you know the website; it's actually their overall business. Um, wondered if you could talk about that and how again your remit is is opening, if anything, uh, as you engage with clients. Yeah, absolutely. I think what what has happened is. There was a time when we talked about being user-centered or customer-centered when um, that wasn't something that people were really interested or up for a conversation about. Uh, and now when we talk about mapping a customer journey and um, perhaps introducing things like personalization into a, a, a user journey and, and into a digital experience, um, that's now something that is people are welcoming with open arms. I think what's happened is, as an agency, what that's meant is if you only do do what you used to do, if you only design and build websites, you're finding it super tough. And, and I know some examples of that. And I sort of saw that as a trend and, and was very uh, cognizant of how I really wanted to grow Manifesto's capability to offer a broader range of services. And, and we certainly built out our sort of strategy and user experience capability because we saw that change coming. Um, and uh, what's great is I think, you know, brand people, brand brand marketing people, brand um, people and brand agencies had always had those kinds of conversations. But in digital, we'd always just been quite focused on making stuff. And I think uh, what's happened is there's now a bit of a convergence where um, digital agencies are, are offering a more holistic and a, and a better sort of value proposition to their clients. So what do you think that, you know, that digital experience, if you will, means today? And, and you know, what does it look like in the future as some of these newer technologies, voice and, and AI and more machine learning come into, uh, you know, come into play? Yeah, so I think um, what it means is that, you know, for quite some time, people are still going to have websites, right? But I think those websites that are optimized for voice search, that are optimized for visual search, you know, um, are, are going to be the ones that start to get the commercial advantage. And if we look at, um, there's a, a piece of technology called AI Poly that won uh, an award at uh, CES this year. Uh, and that, um, that like allows things like unattended commerce in a physical space. Um, but their same technology is going to be uh, enabling people to point their smartphone at anything and it to be recognized and that to then perhaps carry on into a transaction. So you're going to need to create these seamless experiences across more channels than before, where maybe it's, you know, interacting with Google Home or Amazon Echo or uh, a product like that, a smart speaker. Uh, maybe it's a bot that's doing the customer service work. Um, uh, but but it's it's about being able to support many channels and hopefully from a sort of content management point of view it's the ability to write the content once in one place and then distribute it to many places so here at at uh, Velocitize, you know we, we were happy to uh, begin to use the uh, the Amazon uh, and uh, or I should say AWS and WP engine uh, poly plugin to yeah. uh, be able to bring voice to some of our articles. Um, you know, I think that's a broader trend that's carrying through more human ways of, you know, sort of interacting with technology, uh, whether that's voice or, or gestures or things like that. Um, how do you counsel clients to think about, you know, how to raise visibility or awareness of their brand on a voice shelf, uh, for instance, versus, you know, being on a physical store or competing simply online among, you know, 
many websites or different content. I think what's really important is that a brand and the teams within a brand are considering these technologies. So uh, perhaps the first thing I would encourage is, is playing, you know, play with the technologies. Uh, I, I used um, AWS Poly this week uh, to speak in Norwegian for me. I did a, I did a presentation in Norway and I, I, had, I did a little bit of used one of the translate engines and used the translated thing to, to, to speak. And, and by making it real for people, so by giving an example of the technology, so at Manifesto, what we'd look to do is maybe we'd run a hack day with, with a client. Maybe we'd do a lunch and learn where we go and talk about the possibilities. And I think if you can get a brand and people within an organization excited about the possibilities and they start having the ideas for how they could apply it to their brand, because you know the people within a brand are the experts in their brand and, and, and their customers and their products and their services. And so I think what we can do is we can coach and we can guide. And I think what's changing for digital agencies is that people now look to do projects that leave a legacy with their organization, that move them forward as marketeers or, or technologists. And so I think as an agency, you have to be open to that and positive about that. I think as agencies, our job is to be the people that are perpetually learning and experimenting with technology. Um, when it comes to Amazon, uh, one of the things that's they've got um, an AWS Deep Lens camera coming out. So a deep learning video camera for $250. Uh, and I think that's going to put the ability to create your own machine learning uh, into the hands of a whole sort of generation and set of people. And it's you know, the examples are not that complex. You can have your own machine learning uh, model in 10 minutes. Admittedly, it helps you work out whether something is a hot dog or not, but uh, that could be useful. You know, how do you think brands or companies, tech companies, will address the issue of trust in some of these newer, you know, technologies, uh, given the fact that a lot of people won't be very familiar with, you know, AI, machine learning, robots, you know, cryptocurrency, whatever the case may be, um, you know, how, how do you think about that? I think that's a really interesting question um, because I think the issue of trust is going to be one of the biggest issues of the next few years. Uh, I believe that it's in about three years' time that we will all uh, consume more fake content or fake news uh, than uh, true news. And so I, I think it's up to the community of the internet, uh, of technology, of, of the world to, to find solutions to this. And I think, you know, one thing that we've historically been quite good at is, is finding ways to work through these challenges that get thrown at us. I mean, there was a time that we were overrun by spam in our email. And, and broadly speaking, apart from the odd bit of spam that, that, that or non-spam that goes in my spam folder these days, that problem's pretty much solved. So I think we have to believe that if, if fake news is the internet equivalent of email spam, that we will find a solution to it. I think blockchain as a technology the, um, it is perhaps one of the things that could verify um, information. And so the, the, the trend is called Veritas Media, I believe. Um, but I think that's just a fancy way of saying uh, a way that you know you can trust stuff. Uh, and I think, yeah, because of the distributed nature of, of the blockchain, uh, it could provide a way of sort of saying this person is definitely who they say they are, or this article is definitely from this source. Um, and I'm hopeful in that regard about that. Jim, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Cheers.